Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. We are now going to look at a second option for rendering, and we basically are going to use a 3ds Max design sample file, which is a studio lighting setup, which we'll use to import our inventor model and render in Mental Ray. In the last two steps of the Inventor workflow, I show you how to render your Inventor model using a daylight system with Mental Ray and iRay. But what if you're looking for more of a studio type lighting? I'm going to show you an easy solution for that. Now, keep in mind that we still have our project set to the Inventor workflow folder, and we are pointing towards all the subfolder that we are needing for this project. Now, via the help file welcome screen, you have access to a bunch of simple scene as well as some tutorial on 3ds Max design. It's always a good place to go. But part of this list is that you have access to a studio scene share um, scene, which is basically a studio lighting setup. Now, if you don't have this particular scene in your list when you're going under the welcome screen, I'll show you where to fetch it. So I'm going to click on the browse button. Now keep in mind that it's going to point automatically to the project folder. So you will have to repoint it to the C user, your name, document, 3ds Max. So let's just go fetch that so you know where it is. So I'm going to my C drive, user, your username, my document. I'm going to go under the 3ds Max design. I'll find all the subfolder and under the scene, I can find all the sample scene. So I'm going to go ahead and open the studio scene share.max. So basically this scene is a studio type lighting scene that is offered to you for free and is already set up and easy to use. So it's a little dark now. I'm going to switch it to a realistic viewport. I'm going to make sure that I'm using lighting and shadow illuminate with scene light. So I get to see a little bit more what this is looking like. So it's a basic studio setup. The scene is set up to render with mental ray. There's a podium and a placeholder studio letters. There's two cameras pointing at these letters right now. They are obviously placeholders. So if you have a small object, you delete the letters and you place it on the podium and the lights are pointing exactly in this direction. So it's set to light this uh, placeholder studio letters right now. So basically what you want to do here is import your inventor model directly into this scene. So merge it with this scene. If you have a small object, you can position it on top of the podium. Because I'm going to use the uh, Morgan three wheeler, I'm going to actually replace the podium and the letter by it. So right away, I can select the studio letters and get rid of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. I'm going to leave the podium as a placeholder for now. So basically, if you import a new inventor model in this scene, you go on and do the regular import. And instead of replacing the scene, you choose the option to merge the import model within the existing scene. Now, because I have already imported the inventor model in another scene, I'm going to choose to merge that Morgan three wheeler from the IRA scene because I know I've already replaced some of the material to work with the IRA renderer. So I'm going to go ahead and open this existing Mac scene with the already imported uh, inventor three wheeler in it and merge the model from this existing scene. So here I have a panel from which I can select which object to merge from this current scene. And I don't want to merge the camera or the daylight system. I, I only want to merge the Morgan three wheeler. I'm not going to select that plane that I had created uh, to mimicate the ground either. So I'm only merging the Morgan three wheeler um, that I have already imported from Inventor and that I have replaced some of the material to work with the iRay rendering engine. So the reason why I'm choosing to merge my model over importing is that first of all, merging a model from a 3ds Max scene is faster than importing from Inventor. And on top of it, in preparation for maybe doing a iRay render later on, I've already fixed some of the material in my initial scene. So why redo this work that I've already done? So now I'm merging a model that I know will be compatible with iRay if I choose to switch to that rendering engine. And here I get the model. Now to move the model in position, I'm going to unhide the link gizmo box, select it and use it to move the complete model in its position. So I'm going to go ahead and move it where the um, 
podium box is in my scene. So you see that the podium is about 45 degree angle. So I'm going to rotate the Morgan three wheeler to be about the same orientation and move it in the position of the um, box here that serves me as a template. So here, now that the Morgan motor is rightly positioned, I'm going to go ahead and select this object box and delete it because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to move into a front view and still with the link gizmo box selected, I'm going to move the Morgan motor a little bit up on the Z axis as I can see that the uh, wheels are going through the floor. So here I'm using the move transform type in just to move it slightly. Sometimes I like to use that transform type in box. It's a little bit more precise. I'm going to go to a shaded view, perspective view, and still with the link gizmo box selected, I am moving it on the Z axis a little bit more up just so the wheels are slightly sitting on the background that I have in my scene. So, okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to look through my camera view and see which view I have. So I have camera one that gives me this view or camera two that was set for the text. So obviously this is too close. So I'm basically going to move away from my object by using the transform tools for the camera. I'm going to open my render setup and make sure that I have an HD format at 800 pixel by 450 across. And I do have my safe frame active so I know exactly what the camera is looking at and I'm going to move my camera slightly to make sure that my Morgan three-wheeler is set in the center of my scene. Now I, I want to go back into my camera one and maybe move this camera a little closer so I see a little less of the studio and a little more of the three-wheeler. So I can readjust the camera as I want here or create as many more camera as I want. Next I'm going to open the rendering window now make sure that you lower the rendering quality setting to have a quick render rather than a high quality render so you don't sit here for hours waiting for the results. We'll leave the final gather bounce to two as it was set up that way in this scene. And before we hit render, so keep in mind that I'm still working on the sample file here, as you can tell, and I don't want to overwrite that scene. So I'm going to go ahead and save this scene as Within my project folder, I'm going to save it Morgan three wheeler, 3ds Max design, and I'm going to call it studio for mental ray rendering. So I know exactly what that scene is set up for. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm not overriding the sample scene, which is very important. And I'm ready to hit render and I can see the result is quite nice. Now keep in mind that I am using uh, lower quality settings for the rendering. So, so the quality of the render might look pixelated. I'm going to move to camera two and see what that can give me. And I'm just going to hit render here, perhaps increase some of the quality setting to have a slightly better quality than my first render. And you see the result starting to come to life right away. And this was a very easy setup, which is provided to you within the sample scene. So this scene was rendered using mental ray as the scene was set up when we load it from the sample file. I am using low quality rendering setting in order to have a quick render. If you're ready to render a final image, I strongly suggest that you increase the rendering settings and find the perfect uh, setting for the type of image you're after. Obviously, it will take you a little longer to render. So as a comparison, instead of taking just a few minutes, I increase the rendering quality settings to the one you can see in the window. And I get really nice rendering quality here. Really nice image. This was rendered at 1280 by 720 and it took about 40 minutes to render. Now, if you are intimidated by the mental ray rendering engine and all the settings, you can always choose to switch to iRay, which will be featured in my next tips and tricks.